Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Today, I wanted to do some soldering. Uh, just as a disclaimer ahead of time, this is not going to be like a super in-depth uh, soldering uh, you know, tutorial or whatnot. I just wanted to put down these three um, thin quad flat packs and we'll talk more about what that means here in a second. And then depending on if we have time or not, I was going to put some more components down because it's that I just wanted to show you um, at least the technique that I use. There's lots of different techniques to do it. And let's get started. Before getting started, I wanted to uh, show you the tools that I'll be using. Of course, we need a soldering iron. So for that, we'll be using this guy. This is the uh, Heiko uh, FX951. This is, uh, I did a, a review of the soldering iron um, quite a few videos ago. In the uh, Heiko 951FX, it's turned off right now so I can, I can touch the tip. We're going to load this guy. Let me see if I can get a good view of it. I doubt it. Let me zoom in some. Eh, come on. There we go. Let it focus. There we go. This is the T15B CM3. What this is, is a well tip. If you look carefully at it, and let me uh, compare that to the wedge tip or chisel tip. This is a chisel tip. As you can see, it's um, chiseled on both sides. I said it's pointed this way. This is a pretty fat tip for this kind of soldering. I generally use this for bigger stuff. Uh, if you look at this tip, it sort of resembles a bevel tip, which uh, see how the chisel tip is uh, knocked off on both sides, but a bevel tip is only knocked off on one side. But this isn't a bevel tip. Uh, this is called a well tip. If you look at it very carefully, it's hard to tell. The inside of this tip has like a dish type shape to it and that little dish type shape uh, holds a little ball of solder in there and this is what i like to use for these thin quad uh, flat packs <clears throat> the 951 wrong direction the 951 lets you change the tips out so i can go ahead and pop out this tip you kind of squeeze these as i drop the wand <clears throat> and then you pop this out of the holder. I only have the one holder, I never got any more. And now we can take this tip and we can stick it into the holder. And you heard the snap, and that means it's seated in this guy. And then we can then put this back into the wand, like that. And now we can go ahead and untangle the cord, <coughs> stick it in the Hold her and go ahead and fire her up, like that. Uh, the next tool to have is a really nice set of tweezers. They're nice and sharp, they're pointy, and the uh, tips come together really nice. Uh, these kind of tweezers, the spring-loaded kind, these actually need cleaned a little bit because they're a little sticky. Right now that was the iron telling me that it's warmed up, but these will let you hold something, put spring tension on it, etc. Really nice set of tweezers to have. <clears throat> then solder. Yeah. And there we go. Okay, so this is Loctite. Let me zoom in on that again. This is Loctite 0.38 millimeter. This is a, a rosin core solder. And this is a leaded solder. It's soldering with something other than, actually, if you look right here, it is a 6040 uh, alloy. <clears throat> the soldering with lead free solder really, really sucks if you ever had to do it. So it's a, a nice leaded solder for this kind of hand soldering is, you know, is important. Then we have uh, some different kinds of solder braid or uh, solder wick, whatever you want to call it. This is a big fat one. We're probably not going to use this one. This is a nice skinny one. This one is pretty nice to use. 
And something important about uh, oh, yeah. oh, solder braid, yeah, I don't know why the words are coming to my mouth. There's, you can get solder braid in two kinds. You can get solder braid that's just the braided metal and nothing else. Or if you look at this one that says rosin on it, that means that uh, this has been soaked in a flux, a rosin flux. And this really, really, really helps. The reason why they sell a solder braid that doesn't have uh, flux in it is that, well, maybe you want to put your own flux in it because you're doing something special. There's a bunch of different kinds of fluxes. But if you're just doing some general soldering, this rosin stuff works great and you don't have to put your own flux on it. Uh, then, of course, you need the flux itself. Uh, this is the flux I like to use. There you go, the, this is the DigiKey part number for those of you playing along at home. <clears throat> and this is the actual thing, it's made by Loctite uh, MFR301. And your ID number, and this is, uh, <clears throat> this is a flux pen. So it's it, inside it's filled with a flux and it comes out to uh, a nice little tip there so you can very deliberately put it on where you need uh, to put it. And so those are the tools that we'll be using today. Now I've got my camera converted to uh, the macro mode. Unfortunately the macro mode only works in one I don't know, zoom level, whatever you want to call it. It's just zoomed in real, real close. Uh, these are the chips that we're going to be soldering. Let me get a good angle on these. These are a uh, PIC 32MZ uh, 2048, like that. These are the three chips we're gonna uh, put down. And these chips are known as a thin quad flat pack. What does that mean? Let's uh, pop one out. Uh, come on, and have a look at it. So thin refers to the fact that the part itself is pretty damn thin. The quad flat pack portion of it refers to that, see how the pins are coming out of all four sides. <clears throat> Some uh, chips, the pins only come out either side, like a dip or a SOIC or a TSOP, the pins only come out, let's say the, the right side and the left side, but the thin quad flat pack, TQFP for short, the pins come out all of the sides. And, uh, Specifically for the thin quad flat pack, the TQFP, in contrast to, let's say, a QFN, uh, which is a quad flat no lead, the pack, like the, the black plastic, is very similar, but on a QFN, these uh, pins don't come out the sides like that, because see how that, if we turn it over and look at the side here, the pin comes out of the middle and then swishes down and goes over to, you know, down to the board because the board would live right there. A QFN, uh, for instance, the pins are actually little squares that are on the side of the chip. Those are a lot harder to solder than the thin quad flat pack. And I think the thin quad flat pack or even a BGA, which is a ball grid array, which has a bunch of little uh, uh, balls on the bottom and like that one you have to use hot air to do it whereas this one we can do it with just a regular soldering iron. So now we're going to go ahead and attach one of these to the board. Alright so here is the board and here we have the chip. The technique we're going to be using for soldering is known as tack and reflow. What that means is we're going to tack down a corner of the chip, we're going to tack down another corner of the chip, and then we're going to solder the whole chip. Obviously, before we do that, we have to orient the chip correctly. This little dot right here indicates where the number one pin is on the chip, and it's over here, and which pin specifically doesn't matter because all we're looking is for a corner. And if we very carefully look at the layout here, this marker right here, this white line, indicates where uh, pin one is on the board here. And so what we have to do is we need to reorient the chip this way, like that, so this dot and this indicator line up together. <clears throat> 
What I'm going to try and do is uh, shoot this in one continuous take. Uh, we'll see what happens. You know, I may screw up that kind of thing, and uh, we'll see what happens with that. So couple of different ways we can do this. Sometimes it's nice to uh, line the chip up first. This chip isn't uh, that bad to line up. The pins aren't that small and the, uh, the case and everything isn't that big. That's actually not bad right there. We can uh, tweak it a little bit more still and then tack it down. Or another method is that you uh, put some solder <coughs> on the pad and then you slide the chip into the solder to hold it in place. And it really depends on the preference and what the chip look like, looks like, etc. This chip is pretty large. So I can actually kind of hold it with my finger while I do this. And uh, please be mindful that I'm trying to do this through the little screen on my camera because I can't really stick my head in there to, to look at it really closely. And so alignment wise, that looks pretty decent. You bump it over this way a little bit. That looks okay, that looks okay, that looks okay. I can, I can live with that. And now we're going to grab our iron and I've actually already preloaded the iron here with some solder and that was the iron telling us that it's warmed up because this thing falls asleep. And we're going to try and tack the pins down over here. It looks like I need a little more solder. Let's try and load up a little more solder. If you kind of look at the tip, there's that little ball right there. And now I can try and make a mess. And let's see how that worked. Okay. The chip seems to be holding, but if you can tell, which actually maybe I'm gonna switch over to a, <clears throat> a different tip here. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But if, as you can see, the chip actually came out of alignment ever so slightly. See how these pins down here are askew. And so to fix that, I need to carefully melt the solder over here. And you have to keep it hot the entire time you're manipulating it. If you don't keep it hot, you uh, run the risk of bending the pins. And the bottom seems to be in pretty decent alignment. But I think the top came out of alignment. So let's go ahead and melt these again. And see if I can bump these back into some decent orientation. And of course it's not cooperating. Let me see if I can use some tweezers to gently guide this. Because I need this side to bump down ever so slightly. And Yeah. <clears throat> so this is the part that you really, really want to uh, do carefully. And you want to make sure that everything lines up just right. Because this is kind of like the, the prep work ahead of time. If you don't do the prep work, everything's going to come out crappy. Oh, come on. There we go. I think that looks pretty decent. It said uh, extra solder you get places, you can always clean it up with the solder braid. <clears throat> Maybe I want to give that chip just a little extra oomph because these pins don't look like they're quite lined up yet. And as I said, this is not a perfect process. You really have to work at it. Obviously, if you had like a pick and place machine or something along those lines, this is 
much faster to do with the picking place or like a reflow oven, something along those lines. We're getting there, we're getting there. That looks pretty decent. I see little black spaces around here. I see, well, I guess purple spaces. This board is from OSH Park. <clears throat> if you're not aware, uh, the purple color really does it for you. We seem to be good there. That looks pretty decent. And of course, that one isn't just quite lined up. It needs just a little extra. There we go. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. And that looks pretty good. Okay, there we go. I said, I'm gonna try and do this in one big shot, you know, one long shot. So now we're gonna take the solder pen here. I'm sorry, flux pen. And the chip is still only tacked down with the spot right here. So we want to tack it down at another spot. And so we're just kind of going to gently hold it and kind of apply some uh, flux. See the, uh, the, the flux there escaping by kind of pushing down on this pen that's spring loaded. It lets you really get in there and flux it up, which we might as well flux the whole the whole side there. This flux pen really lets you put the flux on, always put the cap back on, in a very controlled manner. And now we can clean our tip and apply some solder to the tip. Where is that solder? Here it is. I said so this is challenging to do on camera you'd be actually surprised how challenging this is and so now we can go ahead and tack down the side and just for I don't know, demonstration purposes if you want to call it that i went ahead and made sure that i bridged those and we will clean those up in a second and so now the chip is tacked down at this corner at this corner and so it's actually in place quite well. And so now let's go ahead and do this side. We'll okay. go ahead and grab our flux pen and flux is very important here. Go ahead and kind of click it down a little bit. Okay, we have a decent amount of flux on all of those. And now this is where the magic of the well tip really comes in that we want to go ahead and load the tip up with some solder. Okay, man, like that. And you see there's just a little bit, little kind of ball of solder right there on the tip. And now we're going to drag solder. So we're going to very carefully drag the tip across these pins, just like that. And if you noticed, the pins actually went and took the solder out of the tip and the tip then basically cleared the pins, it removed the extra solder. And we're going to inspect that more closely here in a second, of course. But just looking at it, that actually uh, seemed to have soldered down pretty well. Um, I need to put a closer eyeball to that. Uh, some of those do look a little bridged and that's okay. And now we grab the, oops, we grab the flux pen again, and uh, we can go ahead and pretty much do the rest of them. Like that, like that, and like that. And now they are all fluxed. <coughs> And now we can take that same well tip 
and go ahead and do the rest of them. Just kind of gingerly go along them like that. And again, you can see they're all kind of bridged together and that is still okay. And do this other side. There we go for other than that little corner piece that looks pretty good. And then do the final sign here. Like that. Ta-da! And the trip is soldered down. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, hey, all the uh, all these pins are bridged together. Well, this is where the uh, you can do one of several things. As I mentioned, the well tip is actually kind of uh, almost like a magical tip, if you want to call it that. That uh, if we look at this row of pins, those actually look pretty decent. But this corner one here is bridged. You can see the little bridge on there. But we can use the the well tip to try and unbridge that. And I think I need a little more solder on the tip here. Because solder is sort of attracted to itself. It's like a surface tension thing. There we go. Let me get a little more solder on there. And let's see if I can Kind of wick away a little bridge. Uh, so they all seem to look pretty good except for this little one. And I want to say I think I made it worse. But then again, that's okay. Like I said, the other technique for removing the bridges is using just a little bit of solder braid. <clears throat> so you take the solder braid and you want to be sure to hold it back away from where the thing is because what happens is the heat will conduct this way and you will burn yourself and it hurts and it sucks. So with the solder braid there in place, you kind of use the iron a little bit and let me clean that iron off a little bit because I think we bridged it more so than not. But I don't know if you noticed, as soon as the thing got hot, that bridge just like opened right up. Okay, man. And I do admit that I'm a bit rusty at this. And as I mentioned earlier, this is not a... Ooh. A tutorial this is just me showing you soldering and some of the different techniques that I use like that there we go and see the uh, solder braid wicked away that little bridge right there and what's nice about solder is the solder will um, how would you put it keep the necessary amount of solder there for you and so we can then kind of touch it up over here and again we're going to use a little bit of solder braid I really should get a smaller well tip because they do, they do make different sizes of these maybe that'll be the next thing I get There we go. And if you look carefully, that uh, bridge has been opened up right there. So now we can go ahead and move on to the next side. So the pins over here look like they turned out pretty well, but not the rest of them. And let's see if I can just do it with the tip itself. And you can see that lifted off some of the solder. but not all of the solder. And so we can then kind of jump back in there with some solder braid. Like that. 
Ooh. Ooh, that is some hot solder bread. Ooh. And you can see all of the uh, shorts were undone over here, except for that one. And uh, something to note is sometimes you can get a little short, like kind of really deep in the back there. It's kind of hard to get at and you kind of go, oh, what do I do? Well, you can always add more, you know, you can always go and add more solder to the chip to really bring the solder in there and hit that uh, troublesome spot. And then use the solder braid to, solder, uh, to suck the solder back out. It's a technique that works very, very well, because I said just through general surface tension, solder tends to stick to itself. And that makes it pretty easy to clean up. There we go. You can see we undid that solder bridge and we can see that, you know, we can, the, that there's a distinct black mark in between each one of these and then we can move on to the next one. And this one, I think the, I think this whole row over here is bridged together. And again, you take the solder braid and just suck it right out. So the solder braid works amazing for this stuff. And not a lot of people realize this. And you can actually see those little bridges get sucked away as soon as the thing hits kind of like the melting point, if you want to call it that. And again, please forgive me that said I'm doing this through a camera. So if it looks uncoordinated, it's because I'm trying to Ooh, the braid gets hot and in a hurry. So I'm trying to uh, do this through the camera screen, which is difficult to do. So it, it, my actions may seem just a little uncoordinated and that's, this, as I mentioned, normally I'll have my head just like, you know, buried in this, looking very closely at it. But if you're trying to watch it with the camera here, it become, you know, my head will block the view. And there we go. We removed all the solder bridges there. And this one is really, really solder bridged up. And let's see if I can open these up. And yeah, the well tip is just failing me right now. Something fierce. Let's clean that well tip and go ahead and use the solder braid. Oh, I'm holding that a little closer than I would like. go. I think those are okay over here. Get these over here. So you can almost see the solder pull away like that. That actually, I think, looks pretty decent. Uh... Oh, my goodness. Of course, my phone has to freak out right when I'm taping. 
there we go that looks pretty decent okay and and uh, we've got this one down and we'll go ahead and do the other three. So off camera, I went ahead and I inspected the solder job on this chip, which it was pretty good. A tool I didn't show you uh, at the beginning, mostly because it took me a hot minute to find it, is this guy. It's like an inspection microscope. It's pretty damn cheap. I actually picked this one up at uh, Radio Shack. If that tells you how old it is, this is what the packaging looks like, illuminated microscope 60 to 100 times inspection. And for those of you playing along at home, this is 631313 is the Radio Shack part number, but I'm pretty sure Radio Shack is completely defunct now, so that's not going to do you anything. Although I'm willing to bet that they still sell these microscopes all over the place, because as you can tell, this one isn't actually branded with anything. This is just meant to be, oh, put it in whatever packaging you want. So it's got a little kind of light guide here to help you illuminate what you're looking at. And then it's got a little light that you can uh, turn on there, but uh, don't do what I did and leave the batteries inside so everything gets all crusty because they leak. So now to kind of change pace, we're going to try the same kind of soldering job, but instead of using the well tip that we were using before, instead we're going to try to do it with this chisel tip. And let me see if I can focus on that. I kind of doubt that I can. Uh, this is a T15 DL32. Uh, you can kind of see it. It's a little bright. Uh, here, uh, let's try it with this one and go ahead and install the same identical chip onto another identical board. All right, so here we are again. We've got our MTPCB and we're going to grab our chip. And right away, we do want to line up our number one pin, which that little dot denotes where our number one pin is. And on this board, let me slide this off to the side here. The number one pin is right here. So we want to go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees like that. We want to grab our iron, clean the tip, apply a little bit of solder to it. And this time I'm gonna use the more traditional little tack and reflow, whereas before we kind of set the chip down and started soldering from there. Let me slide the chip off and kind of tin. I need more solder. Kind of tin one of these pads. Well, anything but working. Let me do it the actual way. Kind of like that. We've got just a little bit of solder stuck to on that one <clears throat> pad there. And then we want to go ahead and put our chip in place and then just kind of touch it like that and tack it in place and then see how well the rest of the pins line up. So the bottom and this side line up pretty well, but the top here is not that great. So we want to, and again, you have to be very careful with this. You need to apply the heat first and then move the chip. If you do not do it this way, you run the risk of bending the pins of the chip. Come on. It's like right there, it wants to. As I mentioned before, I'm doing this watching through the viewfinder of my camera come in all right so the top looks good this side looks good the bottom looks good and that side looks good okay <clears throat> so now that we've done that 
I'm gonna rotate this guy around. I'm gonna tack down the other corner because we don't want the chip to slide out of place. To do that, I'm just gonna kind of haphazardly apply some solder. And again, I'm gonna <clears throat> attempt to do this in one continuous shot. And let's start from this side. Let's see if we can do it. Clean our chisel tip real well. Apply a liberal amount of solder to it. Oh, almost forgot. We do need to put flux on it. Flux makes everything better. Like that. Like that. Like that. And like that. Just good for good measure. Let's hit that side one more time. Flux helps to clean everything. It helps to remove oxidation, particularly when you start soldering. And so flux is very, very important to the soldering process. So, so we take our chisel tip, we clean it in the wire sponge. We go ahead, we apply our solder like that. And let's see if we can get this to flow well. So you just kind of go boom. So the pins over on this side uh, didn't quite get all of them. Looked like they took pretty well. But not so much the rest of them. And let's kind of see if we can clean this up some. So if we take the iron and kind of clean the the solder off of it so the tip is now clean. Let's see if we can leach away some of that solder. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Instead, we can always go back to our trusty solder wick method, which I think that's what I'm gonna end up doing. To kind of finish touching up the rest, put some more solder on there, and then so it doesn't look that bad. <coughs> so it's I apologize about the coughing. I've got a little bit of a cold. Like I said, I wa really wanted to do this in one take. See, these here actually went together quite nicely. It looks like I don't have any bridges on them or anything. And then do the final side over here. A little bit of solder on the tip there. Like that, and there we go. The chip is soldered down. Now we just have to go through and uh, clean up the The solder bridges, and as I mentioned before, you uh, never want to throw away your used solder wick because this stuff comes way in handy later. And be careful not to burn yourself. We do want to add a little bit of solder on there because solder does help to conduct heat nicely. Like that, a 
looks like there's still just a little bit of a solder bridge right there. You can just kind of touch it up with the iron carefully and then grab the side. And like I said, you can actually see right when the solder melts and wicks into, whoop, right there. Do you see it go whoop? Because solder has some very nice surface tension properties that really help with doing this kind of surface mount stuff. And again, right, whoop, you see it just kind of disappear from between those two pins like that, and then touch it up over here. Like that. Make sure you can see it in the camera. So the stuff that's kind of over here is pretty clean. It's just the stuff over here I need to kind of touch up. Like that. Kind of induce the solder bridge. Right there in the middle, let me touch that up. Boom, like that. That looks pretty clean. And let's go ahead and get the final side here. solder bridge left over here. Look at that. Okay, this chip seems to be down. Like I said, I'll uh, use that inspection microscope to go ahead and check all the pins, make sure I don't have any kind of hidden solder bridges, and uh, we'll be right back. And so I went ahead and I inspected this chip, and this chip looks good. And now we're going to do our uh, final board here, this guy. And for this guy, I'm going to use a slightly smaller chisel tip compared to the one we were using before. And this is a T15D16 uh, chisel tip. I've went ahead and I've grabbed my chip here. I've lined up the number one marker. I'm going to try and get this chip to be really close to aligned. So close, but not perfect. Go ahead and grab our chisel tip here, clean it in the solder sponge. Put some solder on it. Like that. And we're going to tack down the corner of the chip. As I've said before, this I'm doing this through the viewfinder, the, you know, the little, what would you call it, um, screen that flips out the side of my camera here. So this is, you know, difficult to do this way. And so normally I'd have, you know, my head buried, you know, with the board right up to my nose. So you can see it really well. So like that, let's see how we did. Oh, I think that's my best alignment yet. Kind of got it on the first try that the stuff over here, we can see that little dark gap all the way through the stuff over here. You can, the stuff over here and the stuff over here. So that's not bad. Let's go ahead and tack down the other corner. Go ahead and put some more solder on the tip here. And go ahead and tack down this other side.
Get a little more solder on there. I don't think I'm getting the angle here quite right. There we go. Ooh, oops. Did you see that chip move there? But it's still kind of tacked down over here. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to try and avoid. So yeah, let's start messing with that. And go ahead and <coughs> start doing the rest of the chip. I'm going to get some flux on there. Like that. And like that. Go ahead and grab the tip, give it a nice cleaning. Apply some solder to it. Like that. This side worked actually a little bit nicer. You don't want to try and overwork it because uh, applying too much heat could be an issue. And so, so we can always go back and uh, touch it up. A little more solder on there. There we go, that seems to be working more so like I wanted it to. Maybe if I clean the tip off a little bit, but we can try and leach some of that off. That looks like a lost cause. But well, put a little more solder on the tip here. And go through, we're doing just kind of a a gentle dragging out type motion like that. Looks like a little bridge there. Ooh, we actually clean that guy up. That was nice. And then finally this side. Okay, there we go. I think. No, it looks like we got them all over here. And we can always go back and clean it up with the <coughs> solder braid. Still got just a little bit of a jumper, like right here. There we go. That looks better. Move on to this side. Everything over here looks good except for the the stuff kind of over here. We do want to add a little bit of solder to our tip because it's a little dry. <clears throat> like that. 
That looks pretty good. There we go. This little corner over here. Nope, dry tip. Need to wet that up a little bit. So then you can, when everything is just right, you can just see that solder just go boop and disappear. So no solder bridges. And I think we're golden. As I promised, if we have time, which I think we do, I don't think this video has been terribly long, but I guess we'll find out. I wanted to just put a couple of more components down just to, you know, for the purposes of demonstration. For the rest of the soldering, we're going to use a fine chisel tip, and this is a T15D12. It's even smaller than the tip we were using before. So what I wanted to put down next is this guy. This is a crystal. This is a 24 megahertz crystal. And if we look underneath, it's got two pads. Uh, this crystal's probably better to put down with uh, hot air, but as of currently, I don't have any. And so we're going to do it uh, by hand instead. And so if you uh, end up hearing me cussing, I apologize. So the, because the pads are kind of underneath, this thing's kind of difficult to solder. And so, <clears throat> as I've said before, we're going to use the uh, tack and reflow method. So we're going to put a little bit of solder onto the pad itself. We want to put a little on the tip here like that. And we want to touch the pad and we want to apply the solder to the pad like that. But not too much. <clears throat> So now we grab the crystal here. Let me line this up a little better. We want to kind of drop the crystal in place. And what we're going to do is we're going to melt the solder like that. And we're going to slide the crystal into place over top of the melted solder. Kind of like that. And now that it's had a chance to cool a little bit, if I kind of grab the crystal and see it's actually stuck onto the board now, but what I want to do is I want to make sure that it's sitting flat on the board. So I want to put my tweezers right in the middle and I'll go in here and I want to just grab this little corner here. And hopefully that's doing it. All right. It's soldered down. See, let's say I can pick the board up with the tweezers here. And what I did was is actually I slid the crystal a little bit too far over to this side. And the reason for that is I want to have <clears throat> the extra room here. Let me do it this way to uh, induce solder underneath <clears throat> the package here and apply a little solder to my tip here. And now I want to go ahead and heat up the pad underneath here. There we go. I think that took. You saw the solder kind of disappear underneath. And that means we actually got it to tack down nicely. <clears throat> and we got a little solder on the board over here. And we can always grab a little solder wick. Use the bigger stuff this time. So just try and clean that up like that. And since we're doing the crystal now, we can do the capacitors for the crystal. Let me go ahead and grab those. Alrighty, so now I want to put down some of the crystals for, sorry, from some of the capacitors for the crystal. It's this guy and this guy, C10 and C11. You can see the reference designators. Uh, these are 30 picofarad capacitors. They're these guys here. 
Uh, these are 0603 sized. And these are about the smallest ones I would want to put down without using some type of magnification. So we can, these are in uh, cut tape. We want to peel back the backing here a little bit and go ahead and dump them out. Uh, something I didn't mention is that the crystal is not polarized, meaning there's no plus or minus on the crystal. And so it doesn't matter how you put it down. Uh, these here are ceramic capacitors and ceramic capacitors are also not polarized. So it does not matter which way you solder them down. But there are sometimes components that are polarized and you just have to be careful that you put them in the correct orientation. The uh, LEDs, for example. So let's go ahead and grab our soldering iron. Uh, we do already have a little bit of solder on this pad over here. But let's just freshen that up, so to speak. Kind of go like that and then put some on this pad over here. And if you notice what I'm doing is I touch the soldering iron to the pad. You want to have a little bit of solder on there. Oh, it's trying to burn myself. We have a little solder on there for a good heat transfer. You don't want to do it with a dry tip. But then I touch the solder to the pad and not to the iron. To the pad, not to the iron. <clears throat> so go ahead and grab our component here. And then we want to heat up the solder and then slip the component in place like that. And just me being anal, as I did with the crystal, I want to put my tweezers kind of on top of the capacitor and heat that up again. You actually felt it kind of sit down a little bit. It feels like a little thick. And go ahead and grab this guy here. Put it down into place like that. So you've got it nicely lined up on the pad over here and same thing. There we go, that one was already sitting flat, which is nice. And now we can go ahead and do the other side. And again, see I'm applying the solder to the component and not to the tip of the iron. We do want to have a little solder on the tip of the iron. For good heat transfer. There we go. And there we go. Two 0603 capacitors soldered down. Ta da! The final thing I wanted to demonstrate is soldering down one of these. This is a SOIC. And this guy goes right here. See, I've already have it lined up where this dot aligns with this line right here for the number one location. I'm going to grab my soldering iron, apply a little solder to the tip. And this one is a lot easier to do with the kind of tack and reflow method I've been talking about this whole time because the pins are so much larger like that. And again, we want to kind of put a little pressure on there and heat it up again, make sure it's sitting down nicely. And uh, with this one, I'm not going to put solder onto, I'm sorry, flux onto the pins because I probably should have mentioned this earlier. The solder itself, this is called a flux core. It has a flux directly inside the solder. And so whenever you're directly adding fresh solder, the flux is added to the work for you. So we want to kind of heat up that pad. Like that. Okay, then. There we go, like 
that definitely not my best soldering job. But again, I'm doing this through the viewfinder of the camera, and that is difficult to do. Particularly compared to like doing it through a microscope, but there we go. We've got that side all soldered down. Now we want to go ahead and do this side. Again, note that I'm adding the solder to my work and not to the iron. Oop. Almost burned myself there. So there we go. So again, not my best soldering job. Those are kind of full of solder, but oh well. So there we go. We showed you how to put down a big old chip. Uh, the, as I said before, this is a TQFP thin quad flat pack. With that, we put down a two terminal crystal. We put down a couple of capacitors, obviously resistors solder down exactly the same way. And then we put down this uh, SOIC. There we go. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you are welcome to put them down below. Uh, if you have any suggestions for videos or you want to see anything else soldered down, uh, please let me know. And always, thank you for watching.